Good afternoon, parents. Yes, six and any um, anybody else watching, so that's parents and carers, by the way. Good afternoon and welcome to today's Science Blob Lesson 2. I hope you're all ready. Um, and I know that for those of you that have logged on before, you're familiar with the procedure. So in a moment, I'm going to be showing you a QR code and you're supposed to scan the QR code. So if you've got any comments that you need to make in the lesson, especially when it comes to us participating during question and answer sessions in today's um, lesson, you're able to take part. So joining me in today's lesson is Mr. O'Riden. He's one of our science teachers and you would have met him before if you've joined before. If this is your first time um, taking part in our lessons today, welcome and you are down to have a really, really good time. You don't need anything to write on unless you really, really want to write your answers on a piece of paper and then you need a piece of paper and a pen. But most of it you're going to be typing onto your um, laptop or your phones or whatever it is that you're using for your slidos. Okay, so good afternoon and welcome to today's session. So here's the QR code. So if you scan the QR code or what you can do is if you go to slido.com and you enter the code hash J772, it should take you to what we call a question and answer um, screen. And every time we ask you a question, you're supposed to write your answers. And today I came really prepared, so I'm always going to have my attention looking at you. So today I've got my iPad, so I can see your comments as they come through. I'm not about to miss anything. You just go ahead and try that. If you scan the quote, you say hi. Let me just check to see if mine is working. I just put back up it on my phone as well, so I thought I'm not going to have any internet or computer gremlin, so I've got backups. Okay, so um, today's lesson is going to be led by myself. And as you can see this image, I wonder what we're going to be learning in today's lesson. Um, I'm not going to pass you over to Mr. O'Reilly. I can see he's got something set up. I can see a measuring cylinder and a bowl. Mr. O'Reilly, what do you have for us? Thank you very much, Miss. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. I can Loud hear you. I can Excellent. hear your device, well. your device as well. Brilliant. Okay, so in front of me, I've got a measuring cylinder, as you pointed out, inside of a bowl. Then I've got three different chemicals. I've got your average household dishwasher soap, just there, nice green liquid. I've got a very special purple liquid called potassium permanganate. Very interesting chemical there. And then I've got another interesting looking chemical called hydrogen peroxide. What I'm going to do is combine these in a very special order to get a very sir, interesting looking Sorry, chemical sir, reaction. Sorry, miss. Yes, Just go one ahead. second, sir. I'm trying to pin you so we can yeah, really I'm see you doing you that. Just give me one second. Give me one second. No rush, miss. No rush at all. Got oh, you, sir. That makes me look pinned, you, miss. Sir. Excellent. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is adding my washing up liquid. I'm going to add about 50 milliliters of that to my big measuring cylinder. The next thing I'm going to do is add my potassium permanganate in there. We shouldn't see anything just yet. Look at the color of that. Isn't that good? Another 50 milliliters or so in there. And finally, now I'm going to add my hydrogen peroxide. And this is where we should see the magic happen. Shouldn't say magic. This is where we should see the science happen. I'm ready? Let's just pour that in until we see the reaction occurring. There we go. Wow. Look at that. It's just going to keep going now, miss. I'm seeing some really great colors on this side. It's much more purple over here. Wow. Excellent. Just pour wow. a little bit more and see what happens. 
just try and encourage it to go a bit more. There we go. We're seeing a really great reaction. Well, that's just going to keep making it. It kind of it's making me hungry looking at that. This. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Brilliant. Thank you. So that is so, what we call an elephant toothpaste. So, Serge is taking you how to, I don't think you can actually have this done at home because you would need to get potassium permanganate. Hydrogen peroxide, you can get that at home. Um, you can get that from a chemist. However, um, it's the potassium permanganate that you would struggle on because that's a chemical that carries a few hazards alongside with it. So, that's what we call the elephant toothpaste. So, today's lesson is about the teeth. So, I want you to think about the different types of teeth structures that are found in your dental structure. So if you're thinking about the different teeth in your mouth, do you know what they're called? Do you know the names of them? If you can't think of the names, do you can you see or do you are you aware that you've got three main different types? And start to think about if you were to draw it, what would it look like? So you're naming it. And if you can't think of the names, think about what it might look like. That looks really interesting, sir. Okay, so today's lesson is whose teeth are these? So our exploration question for today is, how is my food related to the different types of teeth that I have? Oh, I love a bit of steak. I'm not sure what your favorites are. I am a meat person. I love me some steak. I do like my veggies as well. So can you see the diagram um, in on the screen? So you can see that, can't you? Perfect, on the pr presentation. What animal do you yes. reckon is on screen at the moment? And our hope or our aim for, um, to th for this session is, if you're not able to identify this animal, you should at least be able to tell us, just by looking at the dental structure of an animal, to tell us if the animal is going to be a herbivore, a carnivore, or an omnivore. Okay? Right, so typical... Lesson be a lesson. I'll hand that back over to Sir. Over to you, Sir. Thank you, Miss. So to start us off with our lesson today, we're going to start with a few quick fire questions. And I'd like you to be putting your answers into the Slido so that Miss can um, let me know what you guys think. So first of all, what do we think the job of teeth are? Your teeth that you've got in your mouth right now, what do they do? Why do you have them? Is it A, to swallow your food? Is it B, to chew your food? Or is it C, to make your food wet? What do you think? A, B, or C, everyone? Miss, you'll have to share with me what everyone thinks. I can't see the slide. Up. What do we think? A, B, or C? What are your teeth for? What is their job? Remember, you're muted, miss. There's that feedback when we both have our cameras on, um, our mics on, sir. Oh, that's gone now. Perfect. Okay, yeah, so I've, I've got a few answers now, coming through. Happen. And if we go with Safi, has gone for B, sir. Gone for B. And that's absolutely correct. B is why you have teeth. You have teeth to chew your food, to grind it up, to make it easier to swallow and digest. Right, next few questions are all true or false. So I want you to be saying true or false in the Slido um, for each of these next few sentences. So the first one, lions have the same type of teeth as giraffes. Is that true or is that false? Do lions have the same type of teeth as giraffes? True or false? What are people thinking, Miss? Oh. Don't forget when you send your answers in, just add in your primary school as well. 
so we know what primary school you're coming from and we can actually give your primary school a shout out um so we're still waiting for answers to come through sir uh Safi in the meantime has gone for false false i like where that is going and that is absolutely correct it is false lions and teeth uh, sorry lions and giraffes rather do not have the same type of teeth they've got very different teeth because as you'll see later they eat very different things next one humans have 32 teeth oh that says 52 sorry humans have 52 teeth is that true or is that false humans have 52 teeth that's a lot of teeth is that true or false how many teeth do you have Yes, Miss, exactly. Everyone should be counting right now. Remember, you might have a couple less uh, if, you're, if you're young, a couple more if you're an adult. How many teeth does a human adult have? Is it 52? Okay, sir. What have we've we got, got false we've got false that absolutely is false yes humans do not have 52 teeth uh, i gave it away right at the beginning if anyone was paying really careful attention humans have 32 teeth adult humans have 32 teeth not 52. uh question four all animals need every type of tooth so if there is more than one type of tooth do all animals everywhere need every single type of tooth is that true or is that false all animals need every type of tooth all animals need every type of tooth We've got false. Every animal got false. That absolutely is false. Thank you, miss. That is false. Not every animal needs every type of tooth. Uh, depending on what the animal is, depending on what they eat, they will have different types of teeth. Well done. Um, and then last question on our do now, question five. The type of teeth you have determines the type of food you eat. In general, does the type of teeth you have determine what you can eat, or what you do eat? Is that true or is that false? The type of teeth you have determines the type of food you eat. True or false? Okay, we've got true, sir. We've got true. That absolutely is true. Though maybe we should have said indicates the type of food you eat rather than determines because um, Miss has already said she's a big meat eater. Um, I don't eat meat and we've got the same type of teeth. So perhaps we should have said indicates the type of food you eat. Um, so in general, that is true. Well done. Well done, everyone. Um, great. If we could have the next slide now, Miss and i will be um, passing back to miss shallow with the question why do we need teeth making sure that you put your answers in the slido and um, miss is going to take over from now thank you very much thank you so much sir if you've just joined us i'm going to go back to share the slider code oopsie okay so there's the slider code so if you hover over the QR code or you can just type in hash J772 to slider.com. So that means you're able to comment. Hi, Safi. And I like the fact that Safi's actually written her name and her school as had, you know, the tag. Hello, Anonymous. Okay. So, question that Sarah wanted you to feedback was, why do we need teeth? 
So why is a set of healthy dentals important? Hence the reason why probably why I said actually displayed his elephant toothpaste. I was going to call it a giant toothpaste. That was, that was massive. So it was a big, massive toothpaste. Okay. So this is a bit why I wish that you were doing this now because I'm going to move on. Right, I'll come and read your answers in a minute. OK, so if you think about what we do as scientists, well, not me per se, because I'm a science teacher. So I'm a scientist in the form of a teacher. But if we think about scientists that would be looking at, say, fossils, how were they able to tell that a T-Rex was a cannibal and not a herbivore? So what gave it away? Have a look at that diagram. Look at the structure of the T-Rex dentals. And how do we know that a T-Rex, because obviously it's not like we saw it in our lifetime or in their lifetime, but how were they able to determine that a T-Rex was a cannibal? That's what we're going to be doing in today's lesson. So you're going to be looking at dentals of different animals and try to determine and just like Sarah said we can only just indicate okay um using the fossils or using the person's dental structure to determine if that person's going to be a herbivore or a cannibal so different organisms have different combinations of teeth so at the beginning of beginning of the lesson I said if you think about the three main structures of teeth that um living organisms might have the answers were canine, um, incisors, and molar. Okay, so in my diagram, you can actually see you've got premolars as well as molars. Okay. So, what do incisors do? Well, they're the teeth that you would use to cut food. Okay, so they kind of look like a scissors, hence the name. And where they locate it, they're going to be located at the front of the mouth. Okay. So I can see myself literally cutting through that lovely bit of apple. <laughs> you thought I was going to say steak, sir. <laughs> okay. So canines are the ones that we hear a lot of because we think about canine as in canine dogs. Um, we think about canines and I think of vampires. So what canines do? Well, canines are the teeth that an animal would use to do what? To tear the flesh. And that's the word flesh. You can think about the flesh. I know the times when we might refer to the fleshy part of an apple, but in most cases when we talk about flesh, we're talking about the flesh like in muscles and skin. So the canines are used to tear away um, a flesh. So for example, eating meat. And the third one that we mentioned was the molars. So what are the molars used for? Well, they're used for grinding food, yeah? So I know once I've literally ripped into that piece of flesh, I say, because I've got my, I can see myself a big turkey um, leg in my hand, I'm there ripping into it. I'm going to literally grind that using the teeth that are found around my jawline right here. So those are, that's where your molars would sit, and they're used for grinding. Okay, so those are the three main structures of teeth. And like Sarah said earlier on, well, animals can have a combination of these. Okay, I'm not going to pass you over to Sarah. I was going to just go back and remind you what these three words are. So in the meantime, before Sarah actually comes on, in the comment, can you remember what a herbivore is, what a cannibal is? I know that you've done those in primary already. I know you've done that. I think in year five, and you've just seen it in year three as well. So what is a herbivore? What's a cannibal? Over to you, sir. Thank you, miss. So in the slider right now where miss is looking, you should be having a guess at what do you remember? What do you know a herbivore is? What is a carnivore? What is an omnivore? What are these three words? How do animals, I'm giving you a hint here, fall into these three groups? 
let me know once we've got some ideas in the slide on this. What is a herbivore? What is a carnivore? What is an omnivore? Oh, okay. Um, so remember I said how I had my phone, I had my iPad. iPad is not working, the phone is working. Okay, oh, so answers coming through. Herbivores, this is Joseph from Upland. Herbivores eat plants, carnivores eat meat, um, and then omnivores eat both meat and plants. So and I've got an inside joke, by the way. Um, Lucy from Belmont says exactly the same thing. So herbivore, plant, meat, eater, for um, carnivore, and then both. Um, Thomas from Beddingwell says carnivore eat meat. And that's as far as, as far as we've gone. Excellent. Well, some brilliant and very accurate answers there, and you're absolutely correct. Herbivores are animals that eat only plants. Carnivores are animals that eat only meat, and omnivores eat both, which is definitely um, what you guys just put in the slide. So we've got the proper definitions here. Herbivores, that first group, are animals that only eat plants, such as fruit, vegetables, and grass. They are vegetarians. Um, and we're going to look at some examples of these just after this slide. But uh, an example of that would be something like a goat, for example. Um, could you go back one slide, miss? Thank you. Um, carnivores. Carnivores eat only meat, and they are often, usually, very good hunters. They never eat vegetables. Um, and I'm sure some of you wish you could live that life. And then finally, <laughs> omnivores eat both. Thank you, miss. I thought that was pretty good. Omnivores <laughs> eat only eat, sorry, eat both meat and vegetables, which is what we all should be doing to live that nice balanced diet. So let's see if you guys can split some of these animals into these three groups. If you could move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. First of all, we've got a beaver. Is a beaver a herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore? What do we think, everyone? Herbivore, carnivore, or omnivore for a beaver? After that, we're going to split the rest of these animals into these groups. So if you want to answer all uh, five at once, please go ahead. Uh, a beaver, a goat, a human, a fox, and an alligator. Each one of these. Are they a carnivore? Do they eat only meat? Are they a herbivore? Do they eat plants, fruits, vegetables? Or are they an omnivore? Do they eat both? Should I go to next? Yes, please. If you've got um, some answers as well, I wouldn't mind hearing those, but otherwise we can move on. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you, Miss. So on the screen here, you can see a beaver skull. And I've told you that a beaver is a herbivore. And you can see how we would know that if we hadn't seen a real life beaver eating only um, plants. You can tell by looking at its skull because you can see those really clear incisors at the front there and molars at the back. So they've got incisors at the front and molars at the back. And that is very common for herbivores. They don't need canines. They don't eat meat. They don't need those big, sharp teeth to rip at animals. They only need incisors to cut the plants off and molars to grind those plants up. So that's a very typical, very normal herbivore skull. Uh, next slide, please, miss. Here we've got another herbivore, the goat. Again, exact same pattern, right at the front of that goat skull. You can see incisors that the goat would use to cut the plants off the ground, cut the grass uh, off the ground. Then molars at the back of their mouth to grind that grass up into a nice swallowable ball. They don't need canines, so they don't have them. 
Next one, please. Miss. Here we've got a human skull, thankfully an animation and not a real one. Um, and you can see looking really closely at a human skull, we actually have all three types of teeth. We've got incisors right at the front to cut food off. We've got canines on the sides of our teeth to rip meat apart. And then we've got molars all along the backs of our jaws to grind that food down into a nice ball to swallow. Thank you, Miss. Next one, please. Here you can see another, oh, sorry, I didn't point out a human is an omnivore, which is why we have all three types. A fox is another example of an omnivore that eats both plants and meat. Right at the front of their mouth, they've got incisors to cut food. They also have, as you can see there, a nice long spiky tooth, a canine to help them tear meat and flesh. And then at the back of that jaw of that fox skull, you can see that they have molars to help grind up food. Omnivores usually have all three types of teeth, just like this fox skull. Next one, please. Thank you. Here we can see a dog skull. Dogs usually eat only meat. They are carnivores, which is why looking at their teeth, they have only um, those sharp, pointy canine teeth uh, they don't have any incisors because they don't go around cutting plants, cutting grass very often. Uh, and then they do have a couple of molars right at the back of their mouth to help that meat be a little bit more di digestible. But notice that there are no incisors there, oh, mainly canines. Next one, please, miss. Thank you. And then finally, we've got an alligator, very famous carnivore. And as you, I'm sure you all know, Alligators only eat other animals, and because of that, they only need canines, these long, spiky teeth useful for ripping meat uh, and flesh away. No incisors for cutting plants, no molars for grinding it up, just canines uh, to tear other animals. Thank you, miss. Uh, next one, please. And so now I'm going to, that's it from me, so I'm going to pass it back to miss, and she's going to check how well you guys absorbed all of that information I've just thrown your way. Thank you, Miss. Thank you so much, sir. Um, Sarah's going to be leaving us as well, so we might as well say our goodbyes now. So thank you so much for your time, sir. We do appreciate that. Okay, so you. um, year six, this is the point where we check your learning and see how much of today's lesson have you been able to grasp? OK, so here's my diagram that we saw at the beginning. So for those of you that have just joined us, what I'll do is I'll go back to the beginning or what I can I can actually tell you the code is probably easier. So if you've just joined us, you can actually go on to slido.com and the code for today's lesson is hash J772. you know what, well, probably easier for me to just skip all the way to the beginning and then you can just scan the code. There we go. So you can scan the code. You can screen grab and then scan it and go back. Okay, so let's check your learning. So at the beginning, I showed you a diagram of uh, an animal and, and now you can actually see the difference types of teeth, let's start by naming them. So in a minute, I'm going to point at a teeth and in the section, in the comment section, I want you to type in what that, what the name of that tooth is. So let's start with this lovely, big, gigantic ones right here. Uh, perfect, so right there. So what's the name of this tooth? Is it the molar? Is it the canine? So in the chat window, so what's this tooth called? Some really good answers coming. Oh, somebody's actually named the organism already. That's really good. I'm very impressed, Thomas. So that was the first one. And what would you call the set of dentals found here at the front? So this animal, whatever it would have been, I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. So what would you call that? And then the ones at the back. 
what would you call those? I'm loving the abbreviation for K9. So like the letter K and the nine. Thank you, Thomas. That made me laugh. Thank you, Safi. Okay. So with that being said, so we've gone for that as the K9. So well done for those of you that went for um, the first um, tooth as the K9. And then the teeth that we counted, well done for those of you that went for um, insight in Caesars. And then for those of you that said these were the molar, well done. Now, what do we use the molar for? So what are molars used for? So in the chat, let's see your answer. Lucy's been very precise, eh? So Lucy said how, well, you've got the premolars, which are the front, and the molars are the back. So well done, Lucy. Okay, so we've got Joseph has said that, well, uh, the molars are for grinding of fruit. So well remembered. Now let's go and see what your, so that's the code again. gone too far okay so let's start by thinking obviously we can kind of guess what the animal is okay is this animal going to be a carnivore a herbivore or an omnivore if you can name the animal i'll give you a bonus so let's go into our chat windows. So name the animal for bonus and then tell us, is it going to be carnivore? If so, how do you know? Is it a herbivore? How do you know it's a herbivore? Okay, we've got some answers have come through. So well done for those who that said carnivore and it is a shark. Okay, so Lucy got that bonus. She said it was a shark. All right, the next one. So let's look at this dentals. Can we name the animal if you can? But most importantly, tell us, is this animal going to eat mainly plant? Is it going to eat mainly meat? Or is it going to eat a combination of meat and, oh, should I say animal and plant? So I'll give you a few more minutes. Right, mixture of responses actually. So could you just justify why you've gone, why you've chosen your answer? So Thomas, could you tell us why you've gone for the answer that you've given? Joseph, could you tell us why you've gone for the answer that you've given? Hi, Imogen, could you tell us why you've gone for the answer that you have given? Was anybody able to name the animal? Right, so humans, and obviously we do eat both plants and animals, so we're omnivores. So well done for those of you that had that as your answer. The diagram is a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? That's probably why you would have missed the canines that are sitting right here. Yeah, this is the angle. Okay, let's try the next one then. So is this animal going to be a herbivore, an omnivore, or a cannibal? If you can name the animal, you would be very impressed as well.
Oh, okay, Thomas. Okay. Okay, let's see what the animal is. Yes, well done for those of you that said it was a snake. Very impressive. And it will be a cannibal. So well done. Really, really good answers. And then here comes another one. This is a very famous score. As in, we've seen it a lot in films, um, in museums as well. So is it going to be a herbivore, an omnivore, or a carnivore? If you can name it, feel free to. So if you can name the animal as well. Okay. So it's an omnivore and it's a bear. It's a good one that I answer for a lion. So that, that's, that's I, I can see why you'd have thought it was a lion, those big, massive canine teeth. And then here goes another one. This is one that I think we're all going to recognize actually. You can actually name, feel free to name the animal as well. Have a go at it. We've seen something very similar when um, Mr. Ryden was doing his session. Great answers, great answers coming through the chat. Yep, I think we're all, it is a reptile, so it is an alligator. And it's a carnivore, well done. And let's have a go at this one. Ooh. So, if you can name the animal, I'll be very impressed. But do tell us, is it going to be a herbivore? Or is it a carnivore? Or is it an omnivore? Right, if you've just joined the session, because I know that a couple of you were not going to be making it back till four o'clock. Um, if you've just joined, Slido um, code is hash J772. Okay, so let's see what answers have we got. Ooh, I know it's a tricky one, isn't it? It's a tricky one. But can you tell me, um, Safi, if it is going to be a carnivore, a herbivore, or um, an omnivore. So just face and look at look at the, the different types of teeth. That's a great answer, Thomas. Like you know, the guess of the animal. I love that, Lucy. Yeah, you're so right, Joseph. It looked like a one that we'd maybe seen earlier. Okay, so it's a horse, so well done, Lucy. It's a horse and it's a herbivore. How do I know that? Well, we can see the incisors at the front and then you can see those grinding molars, yeah? Because they're going to be grinding that grass and getting it um, as small as it can, which just aid the digestion of the, um, digestion of the grass. So there'll be a lot of grinding going on, hence the reason why that horse has lots of molar or molars. Okay, so we're going to end today's session in a slightly different way, because obviously I know that not long to go now before um, your year six experience in your primary school will be coming to an end. So I can imagine that most of you have started thinking about secondary school, uh, what to expect. So I thought let's end today's session with a question and answer, um, answer session, okay? So if 
you're leaving us for now, feel free to do so. You can leave at this point, but don't forget um, the same link where you're the click the link to join today's session. Underneath that information is your checkout. Do participate in the checkout, please. So you have five questions um, just based on today's um, lesson. So if I go back before you disappear and I go back to my main question at the beginning, which was for you to tell me what this organism is, so this animal, well, we did identify the different um, teeth in its mouth. Who can tell me the name of the organism? I know somebody said it earlier on. So you're right, Safi, in that answer. So it is a carnivore, and we know exactly why it's a carnivore because we can see those canine. But can you name the organism as well? Yes, it's the famous saber-toothed tiger. For those of you that have watched Ice Age, you would have seen the saber-toothed tiger was one of the heroes in Ice Age, one of the main characters, actually. Um, right, so let's come to our question and answer session for today. So if you've got any question that you want, and parents, if you're in the background and you've got a question that you wanted to ask, please feel free to literally add them into the chat window yes diego from save yes that that's right to be honest he was one of my favorite characters because he did start like he was a bit mean to start with and he tired and he was very um big hearted um at the end that was from ice age one actually okay so any questions that you might have Whilst you're typing your question, just to give you a um, heads up as to what is to come. So I know that today's um, lesson started at 3.30. Um, the next week, Thursday session will go back to being at 4 o'clock. The only reason why we had it at 3.30 today was because our staff here at BA, BA have parents' evening. So parents' evening started at 4 o'clock for them. So um, we had to make it possible that you can still have your session and Mr. Ryden can take part in the session and then he can then go up and actually have his parent meetings. So if you've got any questions, feel free to add it in the chat. So next week, you've got an art lesson. The so next week, Thursday at four o'clock via our website, you should be able to log into, um, into the live session. Okay, and there'll be a QR code as well, just as always. So you participate in that lesson, but there's going to be something slightly different this time around. Okay, so this time around, what would happen is we're going to be sending some art materials that you can use for that lesson to your primary school. So they should be with you in your primary school by um, Wednesday, latest Thursday morning. Okay, so if you haven't received it yet, feel free to email me. Ask your parents, they should allow you to email me. Um, my email is I shallow, so I S H A L O at Bexley Heath Academy dot org. Okay, so your parents they have my emails because I normally email them as well. So if you're not sure, ask them for it and email and say so you haven't received it yet. So I can make sure that you get it. Now, if you're close to us, um, so for example, if you live close to our school. Do let me know and you can actually just come and pick up yours if it's better for you. But you would have to send me an email so I know you are coming so I can have yours waiting for you in, um, in the reception area. Don't worry if you can't pick it up, it will be at your primary school. So if you go to your reception, so from Monday, go to reception and ask them. Um, I'm expecting um, some art material from BA. Have they arrived? And you'll have your name on it as well so nobody can ever get it mixed up. 
Okay, so other than us loving art, do we have any questions? So I've got one question from Imogen. I've got a question from Joseph. Okay, so I've just got three questions. So I'll go ahead and answer them. So let's start with the very first question. So Joseph is asking, when are we going to be adding a question video? So Joseph, we've answered your questions as you remember. Um, and we've got the rest of them all banked up. We're waiting for more questions to come in so we can then add those questions to the file that we have and then have everything posted on our question and answer session, which is going section, which is going to be in on our transition page. Um, Imogen have a question. So how are you going to know where to go? Obviously, when you start the school, I'm guessing that's what you mean. I know it's a very big school. Right. So. We're going to have a taster day. It's going to be two days, and that's going to be in term six. Okay, we haven't confirmed the dates as yet. So as soon as we confirm the dates, we'll let you and your parents know. So it's most likely going to be towards the end of June and the first week of July. It'll be for two days, and you will come into BA, and you would have what we call a, a trial run of what your school day would look like. Okay, so you will come in actually have... Um, a science lesson, an English lesson, a math lesson. I know it's exciting and it is going to be on site. Yes, definitely. Um, so just give it a bit of a, a, a flavour. I know you've been seeing a lot of, you know, what the school looks like. Everything has been virtual. So that will be for most of you, be your first day being here on site. Um, you are going to love it. And I'm so excited that you are going to be able to experience that and not wait till September. And then what we're proposing to have as well, so alongside those two taster days, um, we're proposing to have a week, um, I want to call it like a summer school. So I'll call it a summer school. Once again, the dates haven't been finalized. As soon as they finalize, we'll let you know. Uh, I know that some of you might be planning on traveling. That's if traveling is allowed. So some of you might not be able to make it. But hopefully between the transition, um, taste the lesson and the week summer school, you'd have been on site. If, say, for example, um, we post a summer school date and you're not available and you want to come on site, email me and I'll try my very best to look for a way around it. I'll try my very best. I make no promises because it's all down to regulations and obviously the health and safety policy that we have here um, on ground at the air as well, if it's going to permit us to allow you to come and site. I know you don't want to see an, another virtual and I, I, can, I can imagine you just want to come and see. And the third question, so I've read Imogen's question. Yes, so next week, you, you would have your art lesson um, next week at four o'clock on Thursday. Any other questions? I was waiting for lots of questions. Right, so I'll try and do the same thing next week. So if you've got any questions, um, do write them down. When we come to the question and answer session of end of the lesson, you can just literally copy your question and then insert it and ask your parents as well if they've got any questions to ask. They can give you the question, you can then insert it and I can give you an answer. Okay. Right. So, ladies and gents, we've come to the end of today's session. So, I hope you've learned a lot about your teeth and what it is you use them for. I do, um, I do love my molars because obviously it's the best part of Arthur, I've like literally bitten into it. Um, food for me to grind if I can get those flavors out from whatever it is I'm eating, even if it's an apple. Okay, ladies and gents, it's been a great session. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next week, Thursday, for the live session. There's also a pre recorded lesson that is scheduled for Monday. So feel free to take part in that. So they're called a moment in. So you get to see a glimpse of what um, being in an English classroom would look like. So that's going to be on our website and it will be for Monday. Okay, so you can watch that anytime. 
is there any banding test? We're not going to be putting you through any test for banding. So what we normally do is when you come in, you're going to be put into, into groups. I see why you've asked that question, Joseph, because I remember doing that video answering that question. So you're not going to do any test for banding. So those taster days, what, there will be no test whatsoever. So when you come in in September, you are going to be put in random mixed ability classes, and then we will stream you later on. So every um, every term, week five of every term, we is assessment assessment week here at BA. So every single faculty area will give you an assessment in week five, and then we will use those results to then band you. So for example, I know that math, science and English are normally the first ones to then stream you into different sets. Right, if there are no more questions, um, I'll bring today's lesson to a close. Right, ladies and gents, do have a pleasant evening. And I'll be seeing you all next week. Have fun. Don't forget to check yourself out by doing your checkout tasks. Bye for now.